Hi and welcome to a video that I am so excited about because for the first time ever we are going to be touring a chateau that is actually for sale. This beautiful chateau is in the heart of the Dordogne in France. It was built in the mid 1600s at a time when Louis XIV was king of France. It comes with about 10 acres of land, wonderful outbuildings that are completely restored, a beautiful swimming pool and it even has its own chapel. So if you're anything like me and you spend all of your time online looking at chateaus for sale and just dreaming of them and wondering how much something like this would cost then you're going to find out so join me for a wonderful explore of the chateau and let's imagine how we would live here if it was ours and at the end we're going to meet the owner and have a sit down and find out just how much it costs <laughs> As we cross this threshold, we are going back 350 years in time to the home of the local Lord Francois de Monte. And you can really sense that history because just before I walked in, I saw the oldest window in the chateau. And I just want to show it to you now. This is the only stone mullioned window in the chateau. And look at that Gothic arch, beautiful stone surrounds. Isn't it glorious? I mean, you get such a sense of the age of the place. Welcome to the chateau. You step into this lovely entrance hall with its symmetrical doors, one leading to the salon and one leading to the dining room. That is typically French, the two most important rooms in the chateau. And then behind us is this beautiful arched doorway. And just around the corner from that, is the main staircase leading up to the bedrooms. But that will be getting ahead of ourselves, so let's go and see the sitting room first, which is what most guests coming to the chateau would do. Through these beautiful doors, we go into the main salon. And the thing that I love the most about this room is that it has its original panelling, and that is becoming increasingly rare in France. So you're surrounded by wood that is hundreds of years old, would be made for this room. And incredibly, all of this panelling was discovered by the current owners under layers and layers of wallpaper. They had no idea that it was here. And they also found a glorious little hidden door. So the servants could come through from a big barn on the other side with the wood to make the fire. So that by the time the Lord and Lady get downstairs, it's warm and toasty in here. And there's another historical detail in this room that you see throughout the chateau that I really want to point out to you. Over in the window, you can see a detail that is often missed by people when they visit chateaus, but that I know well because of living at La Lande, and that's that there are still some of the original window panes. Now, window panes were made differently before they weren't made in factories, they were made by hand, and over time, the actual glass itself would start to warp. And you can see that here. You see these little, blemishes in it, but that adds such interest to the view and an authenticity to the house. The window isn't dirty, it's just that the light catches it in completely different ways. It changes the quality of light. And in fact, for those of you who've seen my video about the Hotel La Mirande, which I posted on my other YouTube channel, The Chateau Diaries, in fact, I'll put a link to it here, will remember that the owner of La Mirande spent absolutely ages sourcing glass that looks like that and that has that effect because he says it gives the place such an authentic 18th century feel. And it's true, it makes a big difference. This room leads to another room just through that door, which is currently used as the office by the owners. So we can't go and look at it today, but it's wonderful because you could carry on the suite of reception rooms. It could become a library or a music room, and it leads straight out onto the terrace through huge double doors. So it's a very beautiful space. I love standing in rooms like this and just imagining how would I decorate it if I lived here? I love the color of the paneling as it is actually. I think it would be nice to have some French furniture in here. Incredibly, the current owners, because they were on a shoestring budget when they moved in, managed to source all of the furniture in the chateau, just from eBay, from local charity shops, from Volcans. It is incredible what you can get in France. And I think many of you see us doing that at La Lande. We've managed to find lots of things in our local charity shop as well. I think if I lived here, I'd go for lots of painted French furniture, lots of linens and beautiful toiles. But do let us know in the comments below how you would imagine this room, how you would transform it if it was yours. Well, now that we've visited the sitting room, it's time to walk through to the dining room, which is just opposite. And there's a very interesting painting in there that I'd love to show you. 
Do come through to the dining room. In here, I would like to introduce you to Madeleine de Monte. This is the only portrait of the family that lived here for nearly 300 years, the Montes. This was painted in 1757. And there's a story that I absolutely love. The current owners were here when one day some people arrived from Normandy. They'd been tracing their family history and they had discovered that their ancestor in the mid 18th century had been a sedan chair carrier here at this chateau. So he could well have been the sedan chair carrier for this very gracious woman. Madeleine is back in pride of place in the dining room now, but sadly, a few decades ago, one of the local boys had been using her as a dartboard. She's been rescued and she's back home. This is the back of that beautiful stone mullioned window that we saw from outside, and it's the only window in the chateau to still retain its original internal shutters. I'm quite jealous actually, I would love these at La Land. Recently the owners discovered that there was originally a fireplace on this wall and they have found the pieces of it in the barn. If I lived here I would put the mantelpiece back with a huge overmantel mirror reflecting the huge windows and that's the lovely thing in this place is that there are such big windows in every room, it feels lovely and light. On the other side of this door, and I think you can tell just from looking at this door, we're going through to an area that was renovated in the 1930s. There is, in between the dining room and the kitchen, an absolutely huge snug that I think would be a perfect kitchen in future because there's a huge cupboard in there which would make a fantastic pantry. And then, just through this door, there's another huge area which would be a great laundry room or perfect place to have the dishwashers, the sinks, the arrière cuisine as we call it in France, and it leads through to the wine store. And then this room has two massive windows, again, straight onto the terrace and it's next door to the dining room. For those of you who watch the Chateau Diaries as well and know that it's probably Philip holding this camera, which Hello. it is, <laughs> yes, I would make this the kitchen. Philip would make it a library. Just, just wanted to put that out there. There's a little bit of a disagreement as to which way this room should go, so I don't know what would you do with it. But either way, this room has a lot of possibilities. You can maybe remove the arch and make it into a big square room by removing this cupboard. There's all of the space on the other side. And of course, it's got a fireplace in it. Now we'll go through to the kitchen and you'll see why I would put it here. And it's because it's quite small, it needs a little bit of updating. It does have a beautiful door leading straight onto the terrace. Now, this is surprising, but most French chateaux actually have very small kitchens. And that's because the original chateau kitchens wouldn't have been in the chateau. They were often in outbuildings. That was as a security method in case of fire. Or well, sometimes you find them in the basements because of course it was only the staff that were down there in those days. So people didn't care about them being in particularly nice parts of the chateau. And as that changed, as a way of life changed, they started to move them into small rooms inside the chateau so that people could cook for themselves and that's what's happened here. I think it could be a very lovely room because of the double doors onto the terrace. I mean let's face it, this is the perfect place to sit with a glass of wine, maybe a little plate of cheese and nibbles whilst you're waiting for your cassoulet to finish cooking. But whether or not you would choose to keep this as your kitchen, certainly if Philip and I were living here we would be very excited about the space on this side which would make a cracking china pantry. But this is why I love visiting Chateau so much. I'm standing here and instead of seeing these blank walls, I'm seeing floor to ceiling cupboards filled with the most beautiful porcelain and terrines. It would be my heaven. The lovely thing about chateaus like this and like La Lande, which were built over time and added onto by each generation, is that you get these lovely quirky surprises around every corner. And here we find the stairs that lead up to a conservatory. No one was expecting that. This is a secondary staircase leading up to the main bedroom floor, but I think we deserve to go up the main stairs. We've come back to the main entrance hall. I don't think I mentioned that this beautiful door actually leads to the downstairs loo. We're not going there now. We're going to go up the main stairs to see the bedrooms. Great stairs. I've seen this in quite a few chateaus in France. Actually, the chateau is built between two levels of garden. So the ground floor leads straight out onto the front garden and the first floor leads straight out onto the back garden. So you get a lot of light and lovely views everywhere. This door leads up to the loft and at the moment no work's been done up there, but it would be possible in future to add even more bedrooms up there. And here there's a choice between two corridors. 
Four of the bedrooms are down this one, and three are down here. We'll have a look at these first. There are so many bedrooms and we have such a lot still to see that we'll just have a little glimpse into each one. Each of the rooms is decorated with French antiques and there's a few things I recognise in this room. We have the same fabric on our curtains in Dizoiseau and also we've just noticed that the tiles on the fireplace are the same as tiles that we found up in the attic at Lalande but ours are white rather than brown. This room has a beautiful wooden floor and an ensuite shower room. This is the smallest room in the house, but it's actually still a very good size. I love this room. Doesn't it feel wonderfully French? And it's also a great room to show you the effect of those old panes of glass in the windows. It's just very romantic and shimmering. leads to a separate apartment which is where the owners live and um, I really love the fact that this huge wardrobe is on wheels so when they're renting out the chateau separately they just wheel it round and no one knows that the apartment is there because it has its own entrance around the side so it really is Narnia hidden at the end of the corridor. This is the room that Philip and I stayed in last night. It's absolutely huge. It's a glorious room. I have tried to tidy up a little bit but we were using this bed. I love this room. It's so light and there's something incredibly romantic about all of the ivy growing around the window. Oh, it's gorgeous. This one's really fun because like the Chambre de la Tour at La Lande, there was no space to put the ensuite bathroom anywhere very obvious. So it is in the cupboard. <laughs> That's just so fabulous. And it just doesn't take up too much space in the room that way. And the loo is tucked around the corner, just in here. Like a very unassuming door just like all of the other bedroom doors in fact it leads somewhere very exciting indeed but you'll find that out later i'm keeping it a secret for now now we have reached the last two of the chateau's seven ensuite bedrooms and the nice thing is that this whole area has a door so it can be closed off to make a family suite we'll look at the one on this side which is actually the room that philip and i stayed in the very first time we came to visit it's really pretty like all of the other rooms. It's really big and light with huge windows. I love the half panelling in here and the old fireplace with the huge overmantel mirror all built in. And the flooring is very beautiful. Look how old this wooden flooring is. It's really stunning. And the very first time I came here, I felt very at home because I have a Chinese figure just like this on the mantelpiece in my study at La Lande. Again, there's a big ensuite bathroom. I don't know how they managed to do that in every room of the chateau. And it's through this really adorable door. show you this bedroom because there are people staying in it at the moment but it has a lovely door straight out onto the back garden and we've reached the last room in the chateau which is the conservatory that we just looked up to from downstairs 
And this is the perfect sun trap in spring and autumn. This is where the owner comes with her dogs to read. It's nice and warm at that time of year. I love the ivy growing over it. It feels very, very romantic and cocooning. As we've just visited all of the bedrooms on this floor, we don't need to go back because of course there are stairs here. It's actually lovely having stairs off the conservatory in case you want to pop out into the garden or more importantly, let's face it, to the kitchen for a cup of tea or a glass of wine. But now what I want to show you is the piece de résistance. It's just through here. This stairway leads not only to the glorious swimming pool, but also to the chapel, because who doesn't need their own private chapel? The current owners host weddings here and you can see why it does help a lot to have your own chapel when doing that. It was built in the early 19th century, so it is 200 years old and has the most beautiful stained glass windows. This chapel is still consecrated and up until the early 20th century, the local priest would come once a week to perform mass for the family. And there's a detail that I love over here. It's this little tiny cut out here because the priest would sit on the other side of this door and take confession from the family members. And I very specifically say family, because if we look through here, and by the way, I must warn you, we are going to the unrenovated part of the chateau now. There is a little bit of work to do along here. But I really wanted to show you this. The estate workers wouldn't come into the chapel for their confession. They would give confession through this little metal grill in the wall. And do you remember when we were in the bedroom corridor of the chateau, we said that there was a big surprise behind one of the doors? Well, that door leads to the corridor that comes straight through to the chapel. So the ladies of the house did not even need to go outside to come through to mass. Lovely bit of original wallpaper here, Philip. I'm coming out through this lovely little curved gate which dates from the time that this was a working farm estate and it was to keep all of the geese and the chickens out of the chapel. Now we're going to go round the chapel to the swimming pool. This is probably my favourite building on the estate. It's the old coach house and stables. I love the pillars, the arched windows along the top. And this area by the pool is where the wedding party happens. It's so pretty, all lit at night, everyone partying here, able to go in the pool. It's idyllic. This is definitely what we're missing at Lalande. The area with the columns was the coach house, and that's where all of the tables are for the weddings at the moment. But next to it are the old stables, and that's a huge indoor space that would make a perfect indoor venue. And on the other side of the courtyard is the piggery, which in the future could be a catering kitchen, because this is already a successful wedding business. So for anyone who wanted to carry on with that, there's a lot of potential for the future. And what I love about old properties like this is that you see all of these traces of history. For example, up here is the area where the itinerant estate workers would have slept. Now, they were people who traveled around France, going to each different region at the time that there was work. For example, they would be in the area of vineyards at the time of doing the harvest and other areas for different harvests around the country. So they would only need to be housed for a short amount of time. And that is why a lot of buildings have these overflow areas that can be used as bedrooms. And if you look at the base of these huge, magnificent columns, you can see that the corners are damaged and that's where the old carriages would have clipped them on their way in and out. All these little traces of history, that's what I love. Also on the property, there's an entirely separate lodge with three ensuite bedrooms as well. And we're going to go inside just for a little glimpse because this is where the kitchen for the chateau was and it still has an enormous bread oven. The bread oven is in what is now the main sitting room of the lodge and it's absolutely huge. It's the entire width of that old stone wall squared. So about a three meter round bread oven inside there. And of course it would have fed all of the estate workers in the past. Just imagine the pizza nights that you could have here. And as you can see, there would have been a system to have a huge spit here as well to roast lots and lots of things on the fire.
this is not the only extra building here. There's also an area above the garage, which is a whole separate apartment lived in by the current owners. And it's absolutely huge. It's got a sitting room, a dining room, a bedroom, bathroom, and dressing room. And as we saw inside, it's got a little door straight into the chateau, or it has its own entrance outside as well. We're ending this tour outside on the front terrace of the chateau. And I wanted to show you this area because although sad, it's very dry at the moment. We've had a terrible drought in France this summer. So things are not as green and lush as they usually are. I want you to see the stunning trees here. They are hundreds and hundreds of years old. And now we're gonna go and meet Janet for the all important question. How much does all of this cost? I'm here with a lovely Janet and you're gonna tell us a little bit more about your time here. How long have you been living here? We've been here nearly 19 years. <laughs> And, uh, and it's been a wonderful adventure. We love it so much and it will be yeah. really difficult to leave it. It's time perhaps for us to move on. And the chateau really does benefit from having people in it. And it needs mm. a, either a family or for it to do weddings or something, something else like that. And you've been doing weddings here, haven't you? We have been doing weddings and it's been great fun. It's a very nice thing to do, weddings. They're happy occasions. It is. You're always there on someone's most important day. <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, I decided that if I come back in another life, I want to be a florist. <laughs> <laughs> So you must already know all of the florists, everybody in the local area, and I'm sure you could help people if they were buying to carry on weddings. Absolutely. We have no intention of leaving the area. We really yes. want to stay locally because it's so lovely and everybody around is... It, there is everything here that anybody would ever need yes. in a community, but we're going to downsize just a little bit. I do think that's one of the extraordinary things about this chateau is that it feels completely remote. The terrace looks over this beautiful valley. You could just be in the middle of nowhere, but in fact, you're very close to a thriving local town yep. there's a gorgeous friday market every week with all the local produce and we're in the perigord here and that's famous for its duck so duck confit and pate and delicious local cheeses and wine because you're only an hour from bergerac 40 minutes from angoulême an hour and a half from bordeaux so all of these incredible wine regions saint emilion yep. and everything is around here airports fast trains links to all the cities yes no. so 40 minutes from angoulême and then how long does it take for the train to get to Paris? Two hours. It's just, it's amazing. No yeah. wonder the Dordogne is such a touristy area. Absolutely, absolutely. And the weather's wonderful and the wine is superb. <laughs> So I think this is the perfect chateau for anybody looking for a family life because it's not too big when you're inside. Although you have all of these possibilities, all of these outbuildings, it feels very human scaled inside, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, yeah. And when it's just the two of you, it still feels comfortable and Absolutely. safe. Absolutely, yeah. That's lovely. But at yeah. the same time, it could be a bed and breakfast or if anybody wanted to carry on and build into the attics or into the huge untouched barn as well, it could easily become a hotel or a big restaurant. Mm. There's a lot of possibilities. No, absolutely. And that's what I love, a house that you can move into straight away, <laughs> whether you can dream in because there are new areas that you can still be looking at. Oh, it's exciting. But now the very big question that everyone wants to know is how much does it cost to buy something like this? Okay, we're asking 1250000 thousand euros yes. plus fees okay um, so one and a quarter million to yeah. buy this chateau yeah. well i think it's very very beautiful thank it is you. full of potential the location is spectacular thank you for letting us look around no thank you cheers, cheers. and cheers. good luck to the future to many many thank more you. adventures thank you <laughs> and if any of you are interested in knowing more about this chateau or maybe arranging a viewing then the contact details will be in the description box below thank you so much janet and thank you all for watching and i will see you again on the grand tour of europe with another video soon in the meantime i've got my weekly videos on the chateau diaries cheers janet cheers <laughs> cheers to you all